listen, I've never really worried about racism. Racism. I, I, I don't know why. Like, it's never really affected me. But have I felt it? My wife asked me last night, have I ever felt it? And I got to be honest with you, yes. Yes. I, I, I always lie to people and say no. When I first moved to North Bergen, I felt it a little bit. And then throughout the years, it got a lot easier. But at the end, I knew I had to get out of North Bergen because no matter what I would be achieve, at the end of the day, I'd always be a speck there. And now that doesn't matter to me. I am a fucking speck. I don't give a fuck what you know what you think of me. I'm Spanish. What do you want me to do? If if you're black, if you're African American, if you're Chinese, whatever. Somebody, but uh, where are we going with this? I don't even. I'm not sure. Uh, if you ever uh, experienced racism? Yeah, if you ever experienced racism, you know. Bruce Lee experienced it. He felt it. He was very hurt by it. He got fucked in the ass. They took a show from him. He went to China. He made his point, and then they had to go get him. And that describes the word hypocrisy. Now, who else did that happen to that you know? Anybody else you know that happened to? You're looking at him. You're listening to him. I was here since 1997. And I've been rocking, guys. Guys, I'm, I'm looking at you at the eye. I'm looking at the microphone at the eye. I've been killing them since 2004. Seriously, that was 13 years in. Once I started following Mooney and I put the longest yard together, I was a 50-50 comic. But when I fucking ripped your fucking heart out, I'd rip your heart out. You've heard the stories about the fucking comedy store. Nobody talked to me, guys. I would beg agents. I would drop off packages every day. I would argue with agents. I would make, and I just could not figure it out. I never blamed it on racism. I never blamed it on my felony. I didn't know what to blame it on. I didn't know what to blame it on. And then something happened in 2013 that changed all that. Because it wasn't even about the talent. Guess what happened in 2013 that changed all that? I don't know. I sold the ticket. <laughs> so it didn't matter how funny I was in 2006 even after the longest yard guys even after seeing the longest yard you guys know I'm in that movie and I'm standing right there with Tracy Morgan and all those motherfuckers if I'm a good agent I'm like I'm gonna sign that kid because he ain't shit today but if I could work with him right or put him on the right path I could do something with him nobody talked to me they, st they treated me like I had more fucking HIV than before. <laughs> it was like they shot an extra shot of HIV at me now. <laughs> you know? So nobody wanted to talk to me. It wasn't until 2013 till I sold Sal's. I sold out Sal's, 113 tickets. And then I sold out San Francisco. Oh, I got like 380 on a Thursday night with Felicia. And all of a sudden, guys... You should have seen all the people that said bad things about me over the years, that said I wouldn't amount to nothing, that wouldn't return my calls for years. All of a sudden, that changed. Now, you got two things to do with that. You could either be cocky, or you could just write it off to business. I think 20% of it with some people, I was cocky. The other 80, I wrote off to business, and I still do business with those people because it was all a part of business. You have to realize, unless you're fucking, once money, you could be the funniest guy in the world, you could be the best painter in the fucking world, you could draw the best sketches of Lee, you could draw a sketch of the Titanic, but unless you put a value on that and you figure out how to put a value on that, you're done. You're done, nobody decides until you decide. You know what, that flag of the United States of America I drew, I want $10,000 for that. And if you look at somebody's eyes and you explain to them why you want the 10 G for that flag and talk to them with the right passion, they're going to buy that fucking flag because it's what value you put on yourself at the end of the fucking day. So it was really weird when 2013 came. So nobody talked to me. For years, Rogan's been telling people, people have been, club owners have been telling, I've been telling people, dog, watch this. Nobody paid attention to me sending people tapes. You know how much money I spent on sending people tapes? How many tapes I dropped off? You know, and then the comic, the agents made fools of me. They would go, well, you have to sell the whole department. 
How many guys you got? 13. All right. Let me go down and sell 13 motherfuckers. So I would drop off 13 tapes while we voted against you. You know how many of those I got, guys? For years, people voted against me. But I sold one ticket. And now everybody's my friend. The phone's ringing. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> so if you learned anything about that Bruce Lee thing, all at the end was, his was a beautiful story. But at the end, they had to go suck his dick. And yeah. come back and fucking light his cigarettes and tell him how much they love Chinese people and fucking <laughs> get massages and do kung fu and jump up and down. And that's at the end, he won. Yeah. 